Woo! God bless you. I hope everyone is having a great day. This is Brother David. Today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, which says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Our God is so faithful, and the result of this letter will reveal the deep and ugly problems among the church at Corinth. But none of these things will keep God from being faithful. By his grace to any person who has come to him through faith in Jesus Christ, Paul's readers, these troubled Corinthian Christians, were called by God into a fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. All Christians are also called into this fellowship. This tells us two things about what God intends for us. First, he does not mean to save us and have us keep our distance until we have arrived in eternity. God sees us as beings in fellowship, a deep and direct relationship with him and with Jesus Christ. Second, Paul is emphasizing that all who are in Christ are by definition in a relationship with each other. These relationships themselves are a gift because of God's sovereign and unchangeable promise. Believers are assured of this grace past, present, and future. And this will remain assured of a future glory at Jesus' appearing. Fellowship means union. God is faithful and will do everything that he has promised to do. Many are called, but few are chosen. In fact, all are called, but only those who receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior are the ones who are chosen. God will keep our faith strong. He will do so until Jesus returns. God has chosen us to share in Jesus' life, and God has called us into fellowship with him through Jesus because he is faithful. So he will continue his work in us. No trial, no suffering should make us doubt all that God has done for us. Because our God is faithful, he will not leave his promises unfulfilled or his work unfinished. This world will break their promise, but God never will. All that God has promised, he will do. God will supply all of our needs. But it all goes back to what we've been talking about. We as Christians need to keep our eyes on Jesus and not look to the right or to the left. As we see, we are called into a fellowship. That means trusting in God. Like we've been saying, whoever believes in Jesus, that's from John 3, 16, and it's a continual believing each and every day. We're keeping our eyes on him. We're dying to ourselves daily giving up what we want and doing what God wants, desiring to do what God wants, doing what is pleasing to the Lord each and every day. And as Jesus said, we are to deny ourselves and to take up our cross daily and follow him. And Jesus says if we don't, then we are not worthy of being his followers. We're not worthy of following him. That's the fellowship that we're talking about here today. We are called and we received an invitation into this fellowship with God through Jesus. And where the veil that we're about to talk about is torn down, God is not some far away being just letting us simulate through life, like a computer versus computer video game. We're now in fellowship with God. We can come to God with each and any and everything that we need. All we have to do is cry out to Him because all that God has promised will happen. And if you want to know what those promises are, they're right here in this Bible. All you have to do is open the Bible and read it and find out what these promises are. See, this is such a beautiful verse. It's encouraging for us who have called on the name of the Lord, who have put our faith and trust in Jesus, who have accepted Jesus' free gift of salvation, that free gift of grace. We are now called and accepted the call, they accepted the invitation to have fellowship with God, the one who created everything that we see. And everything that we don't see. Who formed us with his hands. We have fellowship with the God who created everything. 
who is so much more than we can even imagine. And we have fellowship with our Savior, the one who loved us so very much that he knew that we couldn't do this on their own, that he came, lived a perfect sinless life, but died an innocent man, taking our punishment in our place. And now we have fellowship with this mighty God. But if we don't know him today, then you don't understand his promises, you don't know his promises. You don't know that our God is faithful and he will do everything that he says he'll do. It's like we've been talking about. We have this companion in life. No matter what is going on, all the trials and tribulations of this world, all the sufferings we have, we know that our God is faithful. He's right there right beside us. He's going to lead us out. But you don't have that. Because maybe you're playing games with God. Maybe you intellectually know who Jesus is. But you never called on him. You don't take the time to get to know him, to talk to him, to pray, to read the Bible. I would like to introduce you to Jesus right now. To let you know exactly what Jesus did and what it means for you. So you can have this fellowship that we're talking about. And experience for yourself fellowship with the mighty God who created you. Who created everything that you see. So you will know and you can stand on that he is faithful in everything he's promised. So the gospel in a nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3. Sin entered the world, and sin creates a wall that separates all of us from God. And this is because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin creates that wall. And the wages of punishment for our sin is death, which means because we sin, not one of us is worthy of going to heaven. There's a punishment for our sin, and because we sin, we deserve punishment. We deserve destruction. We deserve eternal separation from God, which means a life in hell. But here's the mercy of God that God loves you so much that God, the Son, Jesus, left heaven. God sent his Son, who became a flesh and blood human, who was fully God, fully man. And Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life. On the cross, Jesus became sin for us to pay our sins, which means when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put our sins on himself like a garment. Jesus took the punishment for our sins, the punishment that we deserve, Jesus took in our place. Because as I've said, the wages, the punishment for sin is death. We sin. We deserve this punishment. We deserve to be on that cross. But God loves us so much that he sent his son, who lived a perfect sinless life. He was innocent of death. But instead of us being punished for our sins, Jesus took that punishment and died for us. And when you believe the gospel message and are saved, then you put on Jesus' righteousness. Because we are all like a garment, stained with sin. But when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then it's like we're in a washing machine. We are washed clean with the precious blood of Jesus. We are washed white as snow. And now when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. Now God sees Jesus. The gospel message is that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day. And if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. And like we said, that belief is continual. Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. There are not multiple ways to get to heaven. No one else can save you. A preacher will not save you. Your mom, your dad, they won't save you. Your works, your deeds can't earn you into heaven. Salvation cannot be found in anyone or anywhere. Allah can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Salvation can only be obtained by Jesus Christ because Jesus' blood is the ticket. On the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins, took our punishment, Jesus' blood is what bought our ticket into heaven. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down the wall that separates us from God. And Jesus' blood redeemed us, bought us back, paid the ransom to free us from the power of sin, to free us from returning to hell. And now, because of his blood, we have fellowship with God. So if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, which means you're not just saying words, you're not trying to please someone. You're not looking for a good out of hell free card. But you really believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross. And you truly want to live from now. Then you'll be saved. And this is Jesus' free gift of grace. All you have to do is accept it. Because we cannot earn our way to heaven. 
We can't be a good enough person. We can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it will not matter how much you've given to charity or that you think that you're good enough that you never robbed or killed anybody. Our works, our deeds are not good enough to get us into heaven. It is by grace through faith that we are saved. It is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, let's say mentioned most. Grace means an unearned gift. We cannot earn it. We do not deserve it. We do not deserve salvation. We don't deserve Jesus. We can't earn our way to heaven. We don't deserve to go to heaven. But God loves us so much that he made a way for us to be saved. He made a way for us to have fellowship with him. And we always follow the gospel with a warning of Jesus' as in return. Because right now you can personally know who Jesus is. But one day soon and how soon we don't know but complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts that the shadow of the tribulation is so big right now. We can barely see light around it, and one day soon the restrainer who is holding all hell back will be removed. Then the tribulation will begin, and it will be a time of terrifying supernatural events. Scared any movie you've seen or nightmare you ever had. Each day will get progressively worse. It will be literal hell on earth. It is coming. Bible prophecy is jumping off the page, and I want you to know Jesus personally. Before all hell breaks loose, because right now, before the tribulation, we are under the age of grace, which means that right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in who Jesus is and what he did for you on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus' free gift of salvation. That free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the age of grace will be over. And then it will be the hard way. And you have to do more than just believe in Jesus. You have to die for Jesus. But I love you and I don't want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, Please turn to Jesus today. Because one thing is for sure, the Bible is clear. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we will be able to survive. But the point is that the end is here. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. You need to turn to Jesus today. You do not have time to keep putting Jesus off. So if you don't know Jesus personally, please take the time to get to know him today. While you still have the time. So whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now. Maybe you think you're not good enough. Say the lightning will strike the building if you go to a church. Maybe you're waiting for the kids to grow up and get out of the house. Maybe you're waiting until your fantasy is secure. Whatever excuse you may be telling yourself right now. Do not put Jesus off any longer. There is no guarantee you will live to see tomorrow. And if you die before you come to Jesus. Then when you stand before God. It will be too late for excuses. So turn to Jesus today. Today is the day of salvation. And if you'd like to be saved, we have in the description box a link to the ABCs of salvation and a sample prayer. But these are just templates, an outline of what you can say to be saved. It is not a repeat after me. There are no magic words to be saved. In fact, these words are not even important. But if you want to be saved, it just needs to be a sincere prayer from your heart. That you cannot do this on your own. That you need a Savior. And you are admitting that you are a sinner. In need of a Savior. In need of Jesus. And you are repenting of your sins. Which meaning you're turning away. You're having a change of heart. A change of mind. And whatever you may be battling right now. Say it's an addiction. If you trust in the Lord and let him. Then the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and change you. If you let him. He will take away that addiction if you let him. Well I pray you got something out of this. But never take my word for it. No one on this earth has the answers. The most famous preacher doesn't have the answers. The smartest person in the world doesn't have the answers. Only God does, and you will only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. It is so very important to read the Bible for yourself. Just picking a random verse or listening to someone read or preach for a few minutes. You will not get the full picture. They won't even scratch the surface of what is in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. And the Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any and every trial, tribulation, temptation, or struggle that you may be going through right now. That's what we're talking about with God being faithful. He's going to be faithful and help you through any of these trials, tribulations, temptations, or struggles that we're talking about. That you may be going through right now. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible if you don't have a physical book. And if you need prayer today, please reach out to us. We want to stand in agreement with you and pray for your needs. Or if you have a praise report, please share it with us. We would love to praise Jesus right along with you for what the Lord is doing in your life.
Well, I pray you got something on the video today. If you did, give God glory. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. Just remember that I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow if the Lord tarries or we'll see you in the clouds.